Hey everybody, so this is going to be a video about just some of the commercially available Bluebird boxes. These are ones that you'd find on Amazon. I don't have all of them. There are so many to choose from, but I'm going to go into the ins and outs of different types and then kind of offer up some recommendations in different situations. So uh, the first question you might have is, you know, wood versus recycled plastic because that is an option. So I'm just going to put um, two options here. So uh, here's, here's one of the wood options that I have, uh, but I have a whole bunch to go through, not a whole bunch, but a few to go through. And then um, there is this one, and this is by Bird's Choice. I would say if you are going to get a recycled plastic box of all of the ones that are out there, this version, this Bird's Choice version is probably the best one to go with. I have the cleaning side open, and I can show you that and you can kind of see, hopefully, the view part. So um, if you look in here, there's a plexiglass side to it. So if you were to open that side, you'd be able to view without uh, disturbing the birds. And that's important because for bluebird monitoring, nest checks are really important. Uh, the other thing I really like about this box is um, the venting. The venting is great. Um, the shielding is great. Um, the size is also pretty good, so let's just measure that. So the floor size is, it's about four and seven eighths by about four and seven eighths. So this is a really good size box. It's very tall. It's got a good floor. Um, there are some drawbacks though. So uh, one, one thing is, in my experience, nobody used this box. No bird used this box. Um, some birders have had great luck with this one, but I would say if you're starting out and you're just trying to attract bluebirds in the first place, I wouldn't start with this box. Um, this is a great one for down the road, maybe if you wanna upgrade, get something better or experiment. But I wouldn't start with this one. The other drawback of this one, there's there's two other drawbacks. So the other drawback is uh, it's a gabled roof, and that's great for some things like uh, you know rain and um, sun and stuff like that. But when it comes to putting a rain guard on, that can be hard. The other thing I noticed was when mounting to a pole, um, it kept. The pole kept hitting because of how much this stuck out. So I actually had to put blocks on this one and then put the flange on in order to mount it so the pole could be back here. Um, so that, that was another issue. The last thing I'd say is if you need to manipulate the box for some reason, get in, break things open, like if you were mounting a camera to it or you're trying to mount a Van Ert trap to it, it's got these types of screws here. Oh, I forget what they're called. But unless you have that type of screwdriver, um, you're going to have to make a trip to the hardware store. So that is a downside to this. Like I, I said, if you're wanting to attract and you're just starting out, I wouldn't start with this one, but this does have some good options. When it comes to wood boxes on Amazon, there are so many to look at. And um, there's a few things that I would make sure. I would make sure that it says that it's built according to the North American Bluebird Society specifications. Uh, you can trust that the Woodlink ones, uh, Nature Way ones, um, most of those are going to be built according to those specs. You do want to look at certain things um, like is the whole size one and a half inches? Great, that's going to work for your Eastern Bluebirds. For mountain and uh, western bluebirds, I believe you want it one and nine sixteenths inches, which is just over an inch and a half. Um, the other thing is size. So you don't want something too small. Stay away from anything decorative. Um, another thing to look for, I'm just, I just grabbed one, um, is what kind of venting? What kind of ventilation does this have? This one doesn't have a lot of ventilation to it. That's it. And then at least it has a little bit of the front. but. The side ventilation is really important because you want airflow going through and that's going to be vital on hot days. Um, something else to look at is, does it have a kerf? And a, what a kerf is, is these little grooves and it helps the fledglings get up here. 
there we go. <laughs> it helps the fledglings get up here once they're ready to um, leave the nest. Um, most of them I'm seeing lately, they don't have them. They used to, but they don't. Don't let that be a deal breaker. The kerf is really easy to, to do. Um, if, if you have like a, a screwdriver, you can basically just score the wood um, and all will do it, but you can just score the wood and you'll get your kerf. Um, the next thing is drainage. So if you're looking at the base of it, does it have any kind of drainage where water can flow out in case there's any kind of leak or anything like that? And this one kind of does, but it's really limited. A lot of bluebird houses will have the corners cut and that helps with drainage too. So that is something that you wanna look at when you're evaluating bluebird houses. I've got my old trusty Woodlink BBL1, I believe is what this model number is. And um, this one is only a year old, but I have another one that's had great success and um, it's held up really well um, and birds have loved it. So some great things about this one is um, it does have side ventilation. This one is a little bit better. It's still not great. Um, you might wanna add holes to it. That's not too hard to do. Um, drainage, drainage on this one is just like the other one that I showed you. So it, the older BBL one had like the corners cut. They're not doing that anymore. I'm not sure why, um, but there is a little bit of back drainage. And when this is shut, it's going to stick out a little bit to where the pin is and so there's a little bit of drainage there you can get a blink camera in so you can see that this one is pretty outfitted here um, and that's important too is you know can you get a blink camera in um, something I noticed that was problematic with this new BBL one model is getting a van ert trap in so that is something that you need to make sure will work van ert trap is in now you think that this is how I mounted it but the problem is when I slide it, I'm going to try and get to where you can see. Oh my goodness, it rigged. Um, this, this little bit here will hit the floor and it won't shut. So if you see that. Um, so I have to kind of push it up in order to make that work. The way it's mounted, the hole, let's say this is the base of the hole right here. Some of it is still showing. And so like no bird can really get in a house sparrow can't get in because it's it's blocked up the hole too much so i don't know what's going on with their new bbl ones but um they're just not what they used to be the other thing is um floor dimensions so you know what what does our interior space look like and you know i know the height's covered pretty well because i know that i can get a um, nest box camera in here but just just to show you what kind of height we're looking at um you know, from the, from the center at least, um, it's about eight inches because that's where that screw is. So that shows where the floor is right here. Um, so that's about eight inches of head clearance, which is pretty decent. Um, floor space, which will kind of show you like how much nest room they have. So we're at four and a quarter, uh, four and an eighth by four and an eighth. So this is really small. Um, again, my older BBL one was great. It was a little bit bigger. Um, so I, it's enough, it's enough room, but it is on the small side. Okay, so this is a, another wood link. And this one is the BBL three model. And um, it already has a little bit of extra to it. <laughs> Um, so this is a little bit of a guard here to keep um, squirrels and other animals from gnawing away at the hole. Um, there's ventilation up here. There is some side ventilation. I personally would drill more though. Um, that's just me. Um, no kerfs in this one, but again, it's really easy to fix that. The other thing is the floor space. So when I measure that out, again, this gives you the interior width um width and length yeah so we're at four and five eighths by about four and a half so 
it's it's a bigger version. Um, some bluebirders are fans of a five by five. Uh, that's great. It definitely has more room available and everything, but this is definitely going to work. So I would say of the wood ones that are out there, I would go with this. Another reason this one, the BBL3 is great is it's not painted. Um, some of the wooden nest boxes that you'll see on Amazon will have like a black top to it. That's going to be really bad when the sun hits. So you would want to paint that white and even still like kind of believe that sun gets through and penetrates. So um, the color here is great. Um, the setup is great. It is a front opening, um, plenty of space in here. There's definitely going to be enough room to um, mount a camera. Um, as far as a Van Ert trap, you know, I didn't try that, but I should. <laughs> I'm not able to show this very well, but there's there's definitely clearance to get the Van Ert trap in there, and I don't have anything popping up out here. Um, so that's that's going to be my recommendation. The BBL3 box is probably one of the better ones available on Amazon, and they're pretty affordable too. So if you're starting out, um, I would go for this version. So the next nest box that I have, which is not a traditional wooden box, it's called a Peterson box. So here it is, and this one is by Stovall. Um, and already you can see that it has very good ventilation, even up here, um, but it's an odd shape. And the way this, this works is when it's mounted, so if my arm's the pole, when it's mounted to the pole, it's kind of gonna lean forward a little bit. And uh, there's a few um, benefits to that. One is the sun is not so direct, so it's not so direct on the top of the roof when it's leaning like this. Um, the next thing is that it's slightly a predator deterrent. That doesn't make it um, predator proof, but it definitely makes it harder for predators to get into. Uh, the next thing is rain, so it, it's going to keep the nest, uh, uh, the nest a little bit drier during the rain because things are going to pour down a lot better. Um, you can find the plans to build this, and they are pretty easy to build, but if you just don't want to mess around with building, um, Stovall is great. I do recommend this brand. It's a good quality brand here. <laughs> if you're starting out with bluebirding, though, don't get this box stick with the woodlink box um, this is definitely more of an advanced bluebirder box and part of the the issue with this box is um okay hang on it's gonna squeak okay so an issue with this box is okay one it's leaning a little bit two this is how it comes down and what can happen if you're not careful and you're not prepared is things <laughs> want to tumble out so you have to be if you're doing your nest checks and everything you have to be really careful about that as far as mounting a nest camera in here you're probably going to have to modify your box so you would have to probably drill into the the roof here and create kind of like a like an adapter basically to make something like that work so this one would require some modification again this is more of your advanced level the reason some bluebirders will use this type of box is you know if they're managing a trail or if you have a bigger property or something like that so beginner level not a good choice advanced level managing more bluebirds uh, managing a bigger property or concerned about predation um, that is a good choice the next box that I have is a Gilbertson, and this one is by Dutch Crafters. You can find this one on Amazon. Um, this is a good box for, it's hardly a box, it's a PVC pipe. Um, but this one is good for if you are concerned with house sparrows. They market this, I think, on Amazon as house sparrow resistant. It is not. No bluebird box is house sparrow resistant. Um, but they seem to not like this type of box very much and bluebirds do and so it's styled to look kind of like a tree so this is smaller it's a four inch pvc pipe so there is less room but you know the birders who, who use this really swear by the gilbertson box uh, it is very popular it is a really good choice 
So I would recommend this one if you are more concerned about sparrows. I also would say if you are concerned about sparrows, I hope that you're managing and trapping. But if if you maybe you have a neighbor or something like that and you're just nervous, um, then yeah, I would I would work with this one. Um, you still want to do uh, deterrence. You still want to trap. You still want to manage. But this will definitely buy you some time. Um, there are there are some people who have tried it and they're like, it's useless. It didn't do anything for sparrows. Um, so, you know, again, you're, you're going to have to kind of experiment with that. Um, and I don't, don't depend on it being house sparrow resistant. It won't be. To open it, you're supposed to give it a bit of a, like a squeeze. There it goes. And it pops open. Um, and this, this part stays mounted. So it pops open and then you would be able to do the nest check. Um, uh, as far as curves, uh, they are in there. I don't know if you can see them. You can't, but I will tell you they're in there. There are grooves in there for the fledglings and there's some grooves right here for the birds, the parent birds to cling to in order to feed. So I really do like that. As far as getting a Van Ert trap in here, I think this is one for sure that Van Ert Enterprises has an adaption or a, like a different version for, so you can get a Van Ert trap in here. Um, as far as a nest box camera, I have tried, I bought this to actually experiment with trying to get a camera in here and the only way I think that that's going to work is modifying the box. I, I hate modifying the box because it requires some heavy duty DIY, but I think that's that's the only way. So my vision would be to, again, kind of like the Peterson box, um, drill a hole and um, put some kind of like a you know wooden block over here and the wooden block would have the camera mounted to it and that might work. But you also need to make sure that that block is taller because you need some clearance because this is a fairly shallow nest. Um, this one is a slot style box and I personally am not a fan of this box but there are some diehard slot box lovers. So the idea behind the slot box is the hole is wide, the box is shallow and therefore house sparrows aren't supposed to like it. Uh, again, no box is house sparrow resistant. So if you see it being advertised that way, it is not. If you are shopping for a slot box, make sure that it does not have any kind of um, perch because once it has that, it definitely reduces the level of deterrent of house sparrows. Um, but there, there are definitely some bluebirders who have had great luck with this. So if you are a little worried about house sparrows, uh, I would say try this one or the Gilbertson one. Um, this one opens this way. I like that type of opening style. This one is a lot smaller for my taste. So uh, when I measured this, I think it was just shy of a four x four or right at a four x four. And that is like the bare minimum for bluebirds, but it is still a little on the small side. The, the last thing I'm gonna say is if, if you're looking into bluebird houses and stuff like that, stay away from the window mounted boxes because those suction cups will break. Um, the heat will penetrate. It is, it is bad for the birds. Predators can get in, you're not protecting them. And our cavity birds are already struggling. So we, we really wanna be conservationists. We wanna really protect them. We don't wanna, it's not our pleasure first, it's their survival first is how we need to think of that. So stay away from that. I would also stay away from any kind of decorative birdhouse. Um, if you get one for a birthday or um, a Christmas or something like that, turn it into a planter or a decoration. Plug up the hole though. Don't let birds nest in there because again, these types of boxes are not ideal for our cavity birds and they're already struggling. So we wanna protect them. We don't wanna hurt them. We wanna help them succeed. So hope you like this video. Hope it helped you make your decision. Hope it made the research process a little easier.